Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, I wanna to talk to you about motor neurons, reflexes, and damage to motor neurons. So the first thing we need to talk about is how does, as an example, our leg contract? We want the muscles of our leg to contract so we can tell that leg to move. Well, it all begins up in the brain. Specifically, it begins in the cortex, so the outer few millimeters of the brain, in an area called the motor cortex. Now, we have a map of our body on our motor cortex, so there's a part of our brain mapped to the leg. So if we want that leg to move, it's going to begin here. And then what it does is, through a neuron, it sends a signal down through the brain into the brain stem at the medulla, the lowest part of the brain stem, it crosses to the other side, continues to move down, 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 and at the level in which it wants to exit, here is where it synapses with another neuron. It synapses with a second neuron, and this second neuron will leave the spinal cord at that level and go to the muscle and tell that muscle to contract. Now you can see it's a two neuron system. One neuron from the brain to the level in which it wants to exit and the second neuron at the level of exit is going to that muscle to tell it to contract. This neuron, the first neuron, is called the upper motor neuron and this second neuron is called the lower motor neuron. Really important. Now let's just focus on this lower motor neuron for a sec. It's coming straight out of the spinal cord and going to that muscle to tell it to contract. Now interestingly, what we have is, in our muscle we have stretch receptors. In our tendons, we have stretch receptors. And if you were to stretch the muscle too much, what does it want to do? It doesn't want to overstretch. If it overstretches, it's going to snap. So it wants to reflexively contract. So if the muscle stretches too much, the lower motor neuron says, I don't like this, let's contract. And all of this is happening at the level of the spinal cord and therefore it's called a reflex. It's happening reflexively. So there's gonna be receptors here that's gonna send a signal back into the spinal cord and go back to that lower motor neuron and say contract. Now, an example of this is the patella tendon reflex. Little hammer hits just below the patella, the kneecap. It stretches the tendon, which stretches the quadricep. This receptor goes, oh, I'm stretching, and it sends the signal into the spinal cord to the lower motor neuron. It says, oh, I don't want to stretch too much, and sends a signal out, and the muscle contracts. Perfect, that's a reflex. All right, this also highlights to us that the lower motor neuron likes to contract. That's its job, it wants to contract, wants to contract. This is important because the upper motor neuron while it plays an important role in initiating the contraction for a particular area, it also plays an important inhibition role. It actually tells this lower motor neuron to stop. All right, now what we can talk about is if there's damage to the upper motor neuron or damage to the lower motor neuron, what is the effect going to be? All right, let's think about it. Let's just say the spinal cord is damaged here. Now you can see that's the upper motor neuron is affected. The upper motor neuron. So let's write this upper motor neuron. What do you expect to see? If the upper motor neuron is damaged, what's gonna happen here at the leg? You can see the lower motor neuron is intact. And what that means is the lower motor neuron can continue to innovate or speak to the muscles of the leg. And neurons release certain what we call trophic or growth factors that allow for that muscle to maintain its mass. And because it's intact, the mass loss that this muscle gets is minimal compared to if it was an upper motor neuron, uh, if it was a lower motor neuron injury. So what we find is that the muscle mass decreases, okay, it decreases, but compared to a lower motor neuron injury, you'll see in a sec, it's minimal. What about the power? Well, there is still power that's present, right? Because this neuron is intact. It can still tell the muscle to contract, but the power is obviously reduced. So mass is reduced, power is reduced. What happens if I were to test that reflex? Okay, stretches, stimulates, and goes through, and it continues to do this, contract, 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 because the upper motor neuron is not intact. It can't stop it. So what you get is hyperreflexia. Hyper means over the top, reflexia. So your reflexes are over the top. But in addition to that, because there's no inhibition, this muscle is just going to remain contracted. This is called hypertonia. 
hypertonia, sometimes known as spasticity. So if it's an upper motor neuron issue and the lower motor neuron's intact, hyperreflexia and spasticity is going to be common. But what if it's a lower motor neuron issue? So let's just say this is intact, but the lower motor neuron is damaged. So let's just say the damage is here. What's going to be the issue? All right, let's have a look. Let's write it up here. Lower motor neuron. Well, firstly, because the lower motor neuron's damaged, there's no signal going to the muscle. So the muscle doesn't get any growth signals. So the mass loss is significant compared to the upper motor neuron. So you have a lot more loss in mass of that muscle. You have a lot more loss in power of that muscle. What about the reflex? Stretch it, goes back to the spinal cord, nothing's coming out. So there's no reflexes or hyporeflexia. And what about that muscle? Is that muscle contracting? Is it doing this spasticity hypotonic contraction? No, it's actually flaccid, so it's hypotonic. Also known as flaccid. And that's a lower motor neuron. Now let's think about what happens in real life with actual spinal cord injuries. Well, let's think about it, right? Let's draw this up again. Everything's intact. Now let's just say we've got the arm here, okay? So we're gonna have a upper motor neuron that's coming down for the arm as well, right? So let's just say it's beginning here, it's coming down, coming down, goes, crosses over, goes down, its synapses here with its lower neuron, neuron for the arm and tells the arm to move, all right? And then this one for the leg continues down. Let's just say there's a spinal cord injury at the neck, the cervical region here. What can you see has happened? You can see that the lower motor neuron for the arm is affected, but the upper motor neuron for the leg is affected. So what that basically means is, for a cervical injury, what happens to the arm? It's a lower motor neuron issue. So loss in mass, loss in power, loss in reflexes, and flaccidity of the arm. But what about the leg? It's an upper motor neuron issue. So the loss in mass is less pronounced, the loss in power less pronounced. It's hyperreflexive, and you can have the spasticity or hyper Tonia. And so this is a nice run through of upper and lower motor neurons and reflexes and also some lesions that can occur.